hello. Uh, my name is Carlotta Chiaffa, and after graduation in biology at the University of Milan Bicocca, I attended a PhD program at the Azorin, which is a leader company in developing, producing, and distributing immunoreagent kits for clinical diagnostic. I am now in the molecular and biology group of R&D unit, and our main task is the production of monoclonal antibodies and recombinant proteins for immunoassays. A couple of years ago, we bought the Proteon XPR36, principally to help with the full characterization of uh, our monoclonal antibodies for the product development team. However, we started to use it as a powerful instrument for the screening and for the selection of the best candidates for an immunodiagnostic test. Today I will show you some of the features of Proteon XPR36 applied to a new diagnostic test that we are developing in the Azorian Research Center. The Azorian is a leader company in immunodiagnostic and as you can see here, um, it has um, the main industrial sites in Europe, in Italy, Ireland, UK and Germany, but there are also two big facilities in Minnesota and uh, South Africa, and the list of subsidiaries and distributors that allow Diasorin to be on site uh, in more than 60 countries all over the world. The unique research center is located in Italy, uh, not far from Milan, and here, about 20 researchers work at the design and development of novel immunoassays. Within the in vitro diagnostic segment, the Diasorin group specializes in developing, producing and distributing immunodiagnostic products. And the immunodiagnostic segment currently accounts for about 25% of the total revenues generated in the in vitro diagnostic market, which is about 30 billion euros worldwide. The immunodiagnostic products developed by Diasorin can be div divided into three major groups, depending on the technology. There are the radioimmunoassays, the ELISA test, and the chemiluminescent immunoassays, which are growing faster and faster, displacing the other two groups. Diasorin has also a fully automated chemiluminescence analyzer, Liaison XL, which can run up to 15 different assays at a time and has a throughput of up to 180 determinations per hour. It is a closed system and analyzes flash chemiluminescence. Thus, it is very important in the development of a new assay that the reaction is fast, sensitive and highly specific. In this scenario, we have developed a chemiluminescent immunoassay for the detection of Clostridium difficile in stool samples. C. difficile is a sporogenic bacterium responsible for one of the most common nosocomial diseases, resulting from the eradication of normal gut flora during antibiotic treatment. Non-toxigenic strains of C. difficile are generally considered clinically irrelevant, while toxigenic strains can be lethal. Distinguishing between toxigenic and non-toxigenic strains is thus of great importance. The first step in the diagnosis is the detection of the highly conserved enzyme GDH, which is the glutamate dehydrogenase. It is a cell surface antigen well expressed by both strains of Clostridium difficile and it has a multimeric structure even when expressed in a recombinant form in E. coli. Tests based on the detection of GDH have a very high negative prediction value and thus must have an extremely good sensitivity. The development of the immunoassay comprises a lot of steps, from the design in silico of the coding gene, the expression of the recombinant protein in E. coli, its purification, the immunization of mice and the production of specific monoclonal antibodies. The most tricky step is the screening of the large amount of clones that can be generated. There are a lot of features that a monoclonal antibody must have to be suitable for its use in the liaison system, so that simple reactivity antigen-antibody is not enough. First of all, for the detection of a single antigen, a minimum of two monoclonal antibodies are needed. One for the solid phase, which will be coated to a paramagnetic particle and must retain its reactivity even when immobilized. And the other will be the signal reporter, 
conjugated to a chemiluminescent molecule. It must recognize another epitope of the antigen to form a stable sandwich and have a kinetic fast enough to be recorded by the instrument. Moreover, the antibodies uh, should be preferably IgG1, which are easier to purify at large industrial scale, and must be stable and uh, highly specific with uh, no cross-reactivity with human or bacterial samples. The detection of GDH thus will be achieved in this way. The first antibody is coated to a, at a known density to a paramagnetic particle, then a sample is added and the binding antigen antibody happens, and then a washing step while a magnet immobilizes the complex removes uh, all the unbound, and at the end the tracer antibody is added, it binds the exposed epitope of the antigen and the instrument detects the chemiluminescence. The first screening step on polyclonal antibodies is performed directly on liaison with a modified assay format to select only the promising clones. A parallel screening is performed also by ELISA, but the results are not always perfectly consistent. Thus, a deeper analysis on the antibody is really necessary. So, a second screening step is performed with Proteon XPR36 which is a SPR optical biosensor that provides real-time data on the affinity, specificity and interaction kinetics on, on of protein interactions. As you all may know, surface plasma resonance is a powerful technique to measure biomolecular interactions in real-time in a label-free environment. While one of the interactants is immobilized to the sensor surface, the, other, the others are free in solution and pass over the surface. Association and dissociation are measured in arbitrary units and displayed in a graph called the sensogram. There are different chemistries to immobilize protein and molecules, uh, which can be unmodified and unmined coupling, uh, neutravidin biotin binding and uh, histidin tagged protein capture. The major advantage of Proteon in comparison with other similar instruments is the 6 for 6 interaction. The microfluidic is organized in six channels that rotate orthogonally to, to give simultaneously up to 36 sensograms. For example, in one single run, it's possible to immobilize six different ligands or the same ligand at different concentration or different conditions and evaluate the specificity with different analytes or the kinetic with different concentration of the same analyte. For the monoclonal antibody screening, first of all, the best capturing agent should be selected. With general amine coupling, Protein A, protein G or polyclonal antimouse were immobilized on a chip and supernatants from hybridomas were captured. As you can see from the sensograms, protein G and antimouse bind successfully IgG from hybridomas, whereas protein A was not able to form a stable complex with our IgG. Furthermore, both protein G and anti-mouse IgG bind with similar efficiency purified IgG in this light blue line here and diluted and unprocessed cell culture supernatants here. Thus, it is possible to screen uh, directly hybridomas supernatants without purification. Then, given that uh, different hybridomas have productivity that range from nanograms to hundreds of micrograms per ml, it is important that the screening method detects a wide range of doses. Here is shown the sensogram of a serial dilution of hybridoma supernatant from 1 to 10 to 1 to 5,000. As you can see, there is a good discrimination between the doses and a good dose-response relationship. Yeah. 
We tried also to see how many regeneration cycles it is possible to perform on a chip without affecting the binding capacity of the capturing agent. And uh, in this experiment we mobilized protein G at different densities or anti-mouse on the chip surface and then let supernatants flow at different concentrations. After binding we regenerated with phosphoric acid and re-injected the same supernatants. We performed the binding and regeneration for 40 times and as you can see here binding capacity as well as those response relationship are not affected by regeneration. Now that the coupling and capturing steps are established, we perform the kinetic analysis with different concentrations of GDH. Briefly, supernatants at different dilutions were captured by protein G, and orthogonally was injected recombinant GDH at different concentrations from 25 nanograms to 100 micrograms per ml. Thus, exploiting protein flexibility, in one single run we have six different dilutions of the same supernatant and orthogonally six different concentrations of recombinant GDH for a total of 36 interactions. And among these sensograms we could choose the set with the best fitting, which is outlined here. And uh, you can see from the scatter of the residuals uh, that the analysis is very reliable. The same experiment was performed also with protein G at a twofold dilution and again in one single run it is possible to choose the best supernatant dilutions and the best analyte concentrations here. Here again is the same kind of experiment but the capture agent were uh, anti-mouse IgG and again you can choose the best the dilution and the best fitting of the, the, the data. Another great advantage of Proton XPR36 is the high throughput. Here we use the chip activated with new travidin and the biotinylated anti-mouse polyclonal to capture six hybridomas supernatant at a time. From previous trials we saw that regeneration step does not affect the binding so in one single run we were able to screen about 50 different monoclonals for the affinity to GDH at, 50, uh, at 5 different concentrations. Here is the final result with 50 captures and 50 kinetics for each GDH concentration. In a couple of hours thus it is possible to screen a large amount of antibodies and rank them for their affinity to the analyte. But our final aim is not only to find monoclonal antibodies that recognize with high affinity GDH, they should also be able to recognize different epitopes and form a stable sandwich. Last year, at the protein user meeting, uh, Dr. Vijay gave us the turning point idea. It is possible to push protein flexibility further. Usually, the six channels are activated simultaneously in one step. But if you activate only one channel at a time, it is possible to inject six different ligands, which will be captured only uh, in the first channel, one for spot. Then uh, you can activate the second channel and inject other six ligands and so on for all the channels. At the end you will have 36 different ligands on the surface and with the injection of the analyte you can obtain 36 different sensograms, one for each ligand. Here are the 36 sensograms we captured 36 different monoclonals uh, on the chip surface and injected orthogonally uh, recombinant GDH. We obtained a kinetic for all 36 monoclonals, but this was not enough again. We added 
again orthogonally to GDH another monoclonal antibody to see if uh, there is uh, any sandwich formation and here in this way we were able to select the most promising pairs of antibody here you can see the result we checked on the liaison platform a group of selected antibodies Three of them gave great results. In particular, uh, monoclonal antibodies N96 so was coating on uh, paramagnetic microparticles, and the other two were conjugated to the chemiluminescent molecule. As you can see here, they are able to bind recombinant GDH at low concentration and can form a stable complex which uh, is detected by the analyzer. Obviously, these results come from the integration of different technologies. For liaison application, in fact, ELISA-based screening has often low predictive value. The integration between ELISA and Proteum allowed the selection of a lower amount of antibodies, but with higher success probability. In fact, if you see here in the table, uh, with the ELISA-based screening, we selected 50 500 monoclonals reactive to GDH uh, and among them only 49 were promising after proteome analysis and at the end only 4 were included in the industrialization process. Concluding, this data show that for the development of a diagnostic test one of the most important values to be assessed is the affinity of the antibodies even if it's not the only parameter. SPR is a very useful tool for the prediction of antibodies' reactivity, even if the final selection is strongly dependent on the final application. Among SPR instruments, Proteon XPR36 has a unique flexibility that allows the parallel analysis of multiple variables in one single run. And the features of Proteon allow the generation of an enormous amount of data. The most difficult step is to design an experiment uh, which will give uh, meaningful data. I, I finish with just uh, some acknowledgement to the TSR in uh, research group and uh, thank all of you for the attention.